In the last permaculture video, we talked about the fundamental difference between monocultural and polycultural food production systems. In that video, you might have asked, what makes the polycultural system so resilient? What makes an ecosystem work so well? Elements in nature are all connected. If you look at one element independent of all of its connections, you don't get the true sense of the element. For example, a mouse in a woodland eats grasses and grains. The mouse poops all around the woodland, leading to the seed dispersion of new plants. The poop is food for bugs and then turns into soil. The mouse lives in a small hole near the base of a large tree. The mouse is eventually eaten by a small owl. The small owl makes its nest up in the large tree above the mouse hole. The owl feeds the mouse to the baby owls. They poop a lot. The owl is eventually eaten by a hawk. The hawk gets old and slow and is eventually eaten by a coyote. The remains of the hawk are picked up by vultures and other scavengers. Bugs and worms decompose the body and it turns into soil. The nutrients of all of these animals go back into the soil eventually to feed the plants and the trees. When you take elements out of the system, you break the natural cycle of the ecosystem. For example, if you have a monocultural food production system of wheat, you have to haul in fertilizer every year to top up the soil with nutrients like nitrogen, phosphorus, calcium. You also have to spray the field with loads of chemicals in the form of pesticides, herbicides, and fungicides because without the natural cycles of a regular ecosystem, a monoculture is highly susceptible to fungal and insect outbreaks. And because the soil is essentially dead, devoid of all the important nutrients, plants typically called weeds will come into the area to try to start balancing the soil again. We also need to power huge tractors to seed, spray, and harvest the fields with. These tractors require oil and gas, not to mention farmers have to keep buying bigger and better machines every few years to keep competitive with their yield. So we have money, oil and gas, chemicals, fertilizer, going into the field that will give us one item in the end, a lot of wheat. Another example of monoculture is industrial animal production systems. For example, we have chicken factories that are large buildings with cages set up to house chickens. Chicken feed in the form of grain is driven to the building and fed to the chickens. The chickens poop, a material high in nitrogen, in their cages and it's cleaned up and essentially thrown in the garbage. The chickens get very uncomfortable because they're all so close together. Their lives are short and sad. These buildings smell horrible like poop and dead chickens. The system is broken. You're taking a ton of energy and putting it into a line of production in which the output again is one item, sad, poopy chickens. Now we have a wheat field in which we truck in loads of fertilizer to get nutrients into the soil, pesticides to kill the bugs, herbicides to kill the weeds, and fungicides to kill the fungus, and we have a chicken factory where we truck in grain to feed chickens in cages where they're pooping out fertilizer. Now, if you design a food production system as a polyculture, mimicking the natural cycle, cycles of an ecosystem, chickens and grain production could become part of that closed loop cycle. Chickens could roam your food forest, rotating from area to area, giving a, giving a given space time to regenerate. The chickens could forage for their own food, eating bugs, seeds, and debris. The chickens would aerate the soil by scratching at the ground. They'd pick up fallen seeds underneath your crops. They'd pick off all the pests from your plants. Like my permaculture teacher Rob told us, you don't have a slug problem, you have a chicken opportunity. The chickens could seek heat and shelter from a chicken house that could have a supplemental heating from your greenhouse or compost bin. The chickens could also go through this compost bin and eat bugs, a compost bin that's created simply from the organic waste you're producing from your farm operation, which will eventually turn into nutrient-rich soil. The chickens would poop all over your yard, adding fertilizer to your soil. The chickens would have enough space between themselves and other chickens that they would be happy. Your yard wouldn't smell because you'd have a small space in the chicken house to clean out, and all the rest of the poop would be spread around the yard. You have eggs every day and meat at the end of the season or at the end of the chicken's lives. This system is alive. You're taking little energy and putting it into an ecosystem in which the output is a plethora of items. Your crops, your fruits, your veggies, eggs, meat. This is an integrated food system. It means less work, healthier plants, healthier animals, and a healthier family.